Hi, this is Michael Paul with New Orleans Scottish Rite College. I want to talk a little today about some emails that uh, we've received with some questions about a couple of the past videos that we've done. And uh, what I was going to do was deal with two questions uh, in this video and possibly some other ones. And I want to say at the start that I very much appreciate the response that's been generated. Uh, I enjoy the emails, the comments. Please keep them up if you have any questions, suggestions, comments, anything like that. Please let me know. They all very much appreciated and they're very useful. Now the two questions that I was going to deal with today are somewhat related and they'd have to do with manners that uh, what we call the Scottish Rite Honors. And uh, one question was what do you do if someone is given a Scottish Rite honor and you know that they do not deserve it. The second question, further proof that there are only 29 actual degrees in the Scottish Rite is the fact that the KCCH degree and the honorary 33rd are both given on honors weekend. And uh, although the second question is not really a question, it was more of a uh, continued debate with some who insist that the 29 degrees that are given in a valley or the extent of the Scottish Rite degrees. We'll start with that one first. Now sometimes uh, Masons develop an attachment for whoever was their own instructor in Masonry and I remember a time when uh, a good brother told me something about the Scottish Rite and it was absolutely wrong and he took it almost as a personal insult towards his instructor. He says it's absolutely true because brother so-and-so told me and he never made a mistake. We have to recognize that many times very dedicated instructors say things and they may be completely honest in what they believe but sometimes errors are made. Not job is not to tear down anyone, but simply to present uh, information that is factual and documented. Now, in regard to how many degrees there are in the ancient accepted Scottish Rite and the nature of uh, the KCCH investiture, not a degree, I'd recommend this book here. This was by uh, Arthur de Hoyos, my good friend, and uh, it is one of the best books that you can get. It's the Scottish Rite Ritual and Monitor Guide. Uh, we'll have at the end, there'll be in the comments section, there'll be a link to show you where you can get this book if you don't already have it. If you have it, please read it. It clearly uh, gives information regarding the degrees. The craft degrees of the ancient and accepted Scottish Rite and I'm going to speak now just for the Supreme Council Southern Jurisdiction. These are not worked in any of the bodies controlled by the Southern Jurisdiction. There are ten lodges under the jurisdiction of the Grand Lodge of Louisiana that work in the Scottish Rite craft ritual. They are not under the jurisdiction of the Supreme Council. They are under the jurisdiction of the Grand Lodge. Uh, in the Southern Jurisdiction, a valley is usually the body that controls the degrees from the fourth degree to the 32nd degree. The 33rd degree is usually reserved for the Supreme Council and while it ne doesn't necessarily mean that it can only be conferred in the Supreme Council, it is the Supreme Council that governs this degree and it's worked under there. So 29 degrees are the degrees of a valley. Uh, the KCCH is the Knight Commander Court of Honor. That is an honor investiture with its equivalent, the KCCH is for a 32nd, the equivalent for a 33rd is a Grand Cross Court of Honor. These are two honor investitures and they do have a ceremony but they are not by any means a degree. A 32nd degree Mason can receive, if elected, the KCCH a 33rd degree Mason, if elected, can receive the Grand Cross. Doesn't mean that they will, but this is an honor investiture, but it is not a degree itself. 
Uh, this is where we'll see red caps and a white cap is a Sovereign Grand Inspector General Honorary 33rd degree. The, as we mentioned in a previous video, the 33rd degree is not an honorary degree. It's the last degree, it's the final degree in the ancient accepted Scottish Rite. It is the 33rd degree. The honorary aspect of it, of a white cap, is the Office of Sovereign Grand Inspector General. Uh, these brothers are known as Inspector General Honoraries. And this is, refers to the honorary aspect of the degree. So there is actually 33 degrees that are worked in different bodies. But the system is a complete system. Uh, honors is sometimes a um, problematic word. And when the uh, KCCH and 33rd uh, Inspector General Honorary degrees are conferred, can be at any time. If it happens to be on this weekend, then that's just simply the way it goes. But it has nothing to do with the fact that these are or are not degrees of the Scottish Rite. Now the question of someone receiving either the KCCH or the 33rd and the belief that they are not deserving of this is a um, particular problem and I'd like to spend a little time dealing with that. Um, I joined in New Orleans Valley a little over 35 years ago and from time to time you hear comments about this, about this person probably shouldn't have gotten this degree or this honor and so forth. Um, from thinking about it, there are actually three divisions that I can see as a area where someone may have a problem. Uh, first is when uh, someone receives and we could say honor, it could be either the KCCH or the 3030, it doesn't matter. But when one person receives it, and the belief is that the person who received it should not have received it, another person should have received it. That's one situation. The second situation, which is more disturbing, is when it's felt that someone received an honor, and they should not have received it, and the one who should have received it was the person themselves. When they say, oh, so-and-so got this, but I should have gotten it. That's a little deeper problem for me. The most disturbing problem, however, is the third case, and it's when other people are not involved, and you simply find serious cause to question the reason behind a particular person receiving either the KCCH or the 33rd because you feel that there is something wrong with this individual, that they are, regardless of anyone else, that this individual is not worthy of receiving the investiture or the degree. Uh, we look at the first case where someone believes that one individual received something and another person was more deserving of it. Um, recently we've seen uh, cases in, uh, on television with the Grammy Awards. There was an individual uh, who, after hearing the selection of an award for a Grammy Award, and twice this has happened, he's jumped up on stage and criticized the person who won the award and said that someone else should have gotten it. And from my point of view, in my opinion, this is a total display or lack of class. Um, he's made the person who, if the person who did not receive the award is in any way sensitive or aware of what wards mean, that he's made that person feel very uncomfortable. He's made the person who did win the award feel uncomfortable, and he's created a, a disturbance that was unproductive from every way you look at it. The point is, if everything is equal, and if an award, a limited number of awards are to be given, 
or investitures or degrees or whatever and if everything is level then it's a subjective choice it's a human choice a human being uses his reason his faculties and he makes the best decision he can for who should get an award and who does not at that time get the award now when and an investiture or degree is announced. If someone honestly believes that another person is more deserving, there are things that you can do to show respect for everyone involved. Uh, what I would suggest is that rather than tearing down the individual that received a degree or the investiture, Go to the people, maybe your secretary or the personal rep, and mention this other person who you feel is qualified. Explain why you feel this person is qualified, what he's done, what your reasons, your thought process, and maybe the next award it will come. In all cases, whether it's in a Scottish Rite body or whether it's in a lodge, we're not about creating disturbances or showing anything but respect for the entire system. If you have a disagreement with anyone who's an officer or member or whatever, uh, you don't bring that out and disturb the lodge or the body. Uh, this is something that should be fundamental. And if it's not, then we have to start wondering what our own foundation is. Uh, disturbances, disagreements, everyone has them. But you don't take this to the large level. You don't make a disturbance. You don't, if you have someone who you feel is worthy, then you praise this individual, but you praise him without tearing down anyone else. It's no need to tear another person down to build one person up. Now in the case where someone may feel that someone has received an investiture or a degree and they do not feel that they are worthy and they feel that themselves they should have received the award or the investiture or the degree and they're jealous and that's basically what it comes down to. Uh, we don't have place for this in masonry. Our job is not to gather awards or distinctions or honors or any of that. Um, I once heard someone say when someone received an investiture, uh, you've deserved this. I disagree with that completely. I don't believe that any of us deserve any distinction or honor or award or anything. Our job is to learn and to teach. That's what we should be doing. And if we go around seeking uh, honors and, 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 and credit and push who we are out before everything else, then we've lost touch with what the philosophy of Freemasonry is all about. This is a much, to me, more serious problem than preferring one individual over another because now you're elevating yourself, your own personal needs, your own personal ego above everything else and that creates a situation where uh, you have to wonder if you're qualified for anything and in such case what I would recommend if you feel cheated or left out or, or disgraced or dishonored or not respected properly, think back to what's really important in masonry and start to realize that your job is to improve yourself. And that's the first thing that you have to do. And you're not improving yourself if you're looking for titles or power or rank or any of these things. And I would suggest starting over at the beginning and reviewing everything that you've learned about masonry because 
such feelings are out of keeping with what you're believing that you deserve. Now the third aspect of this situation is if an individual receives a degree or an investiture and the suggestion is that he is for some reason unworthy of this investiture or degree, then you need to look back and try to figure out is it true and if it's true why did he get it. There's two cases where I can see where an individual may get something and may really not be worthy. One case could be that you never know what's inside a person's heart. Um, there's numerous cases where an individual will work, 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 work and do everything and have all the outward appearances of somebody who is truly dedicated and when they receive for say the 33rd degree all of a sudden they disappear. You never hear from them again. They got what they wanted. In such a case um, this person would be unworthy um, but nobody could really know that until he received a degree. He, he was unworthy from the beginning but he was able to disguise that. He was able to, to fool people, trick people. And there's no disgrace on giving such a person the degree. You regret it, but once it's done, it's done. The real loss is that person themselves. Um, the other case is where there's a suggestion that there is some sort of uh, deliberate attempt to give a knowingly unworthy individual a distinction. Why would they do that? The suggestion often has been that there's some sort of uh, a payment or debt that's being worked off or there's some sort of uh, political agenda that's going on and this takes a very unsavory turn and if such is the case um, there's limited things that you can actually do. Now one of the things that we all have to understand is that everything that we do is cause and effect. When we do something there is a consequence for everything that we do. And if we are leaders and we are selecting people to be future leaders or we are elevating people to rank in positions that we feel could be beneficial to the, the valley or the body or the lodge if necessary, whatever. If we knowingly take someone who we recognize as being of a nature that was not in keeping with Masonic teachings, then we are contributing to the downfall of our own body. Uh, if you are not in a leadership position and you see this, there's only so many things that you can actually do. Again, going back to what was mentioned before, I do not believe that it's ever warranted to cause a disturbance. Uh, Freemasonry is a pure philosophy. If things are going on that are less than pure or unworthy of the philosophy of Freemasonry, it doesn't solve any problems by acting in a way that is similar to the very thing that caused the problem. In such cases, you simply retire. You don't participate in this sort of activity. And that's the best thing that you can do. Uh, I've never believed that if you join a lodge and the lodge turns out to be a problem or if there's something going on in the lodge that you find is objectionable or not in keeping with your concept, there's nothing wrong with moving to another body or another lodge. This is, this is the way to keep masonry pure and keep your understanding and your practices in line with the teachings of Freemasonry. So when we look at the situation of someone who we feel is unworthy receiving uh, a distinction or an honor. Um, 
it's a difficult situation that we're placed in because in the first place we could be wrong. The person may be misunderstood. He may be very worthy and just misunderstood. The second situation is if we are correct and we have to recognize that uh, the very reason that we have Masonic trial is because of the same reason that we have erases on pencils. Sometimes we make a mistake. We take somebody in who should not have come in. And there are cases of where someone who maybe should not be advanced is knowingly advanced for reasons that are less than beneficial to Masonry or the Scottish Rite. These things happen. The problem is when a situation happens that we're very unsatisfied with and we hold it into ourselves. If we just simply say, well, this is not right, this is a problem, uh, I don't want to be a part of this anymore, and we silently walk, what happens is no one fully realizes why you're not there anymore. And you should always speak to someone. Let them know someone in charge, uh, the valley secretary, the personal rep, uh, the venerable master of uh, the consistory, or uh, whoever is in charge that you have a relationship with, speak to them. Let them know what's disturbing you. Let them know from a straight, honest position. Be open. I have a problem. This is the problem I have. It's disturbing, but this is the way I feel about things. Either it will be corrected or it won't be corrected. But if more than one pe person feels this problem and you speak about it, the chances of it being corrected are better if numerous people speak about it than if numerous people simply remain silent and walk. Then no one knows why no one's attending. We often hear lodges. No one's attending the lodge anymore. Maybe there's a problem. It's our responsibility to uphold the dignity and the teachings of Freemasonry. The same with the Scottish Rite. If you understand anything about the Scottish Rite, then you have a responsibility. And what I said earlier, I don't particularly like the word honors, because an honor, and we all use it, I use it, but an honor is really something that you hang on a wall. It's a little plaque and you put it there and you forget about it. I believe that honors are responsibilities and that when we accept a responsibility then we have certain things that we have to do and if we're put in a situation that is absolutely intolerable to us based on everything that we know then we shouldn't silently fade away we should speak about the problem. We should tell people, this is the problem I have, this is a valid problem, this is the reason for the problem. And if more people speak of a problem that they have, then a solution can be arrived at. And if nothing is achieved, then you do the same thing as you would do originally, but at least it would be out there and it would be available for people to hear and know. Freemasonry is such of a nature that many times we get wrapped up in day-to-day -day events and we forget to look at the whole picture. And that's what maybe we can do with this. And I appreciate your listening. I appreciate your viewing. I appreciate any comments or discussion that you might wish to have. Uh, please like the channel. As I mentioned, there'll be some further reading references in the bottom, and I thank you for watching.